Pernine, let's go ahead and do your math first today. Lesson 128. All right. Oh, here comes Katie. All right, Katie, lesson 128. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about estimating square roots. And it's a process that is basically using trial and error to make it happen, okay? So trial and error, um, I'm not sure exactly how to describe it. Um, it. Really, trial and error is just basically you try something. If it's wrong, then you try something different or something close to it. So here's something that can help you though. If you remember um, our, um, we know our perfect squares. All right, so if we know our perfect squares, we know one squared is equal to one, two squared is equal to four, three squared is equal to nine. 4 squared, 16, 25, 36, um, 49. By the way, if you, if you notice a pattern here also, you see how the one, if you add three, then you add five, then you add seven, then nine, then 11, then 13. So what's the next amount? You add what? Okay, let's go over that again. You add three, five, seven, nine, 11, 15. What's the next thing? I mean, 11, 13, sorry, what's the next one? Yeah, 15 would be the next one. If you know what eight squared is, it's what? 64, 49 plus 15 is equal to 64. Okay, so in estimating square roots, what you're looking for is they, you know that, um, for instance, they give you the first example, what's the square root of 20? In other words, what number multiplied by itself is going to be equal 20 when you multiply it by itself? Well, you've got, what's that? No, never mind. Okay. So we know that 4 squared is 16. All right. That's that one. And 5 squared is 25. So it's going to be somewhere between, you have a number line between four and five. It's going to be in here somewhere. What you find out about square roots is many times they don't have an exact number except for those perfect squares. Um, most of them, when you start dealing with them as you get up into junior, senior high, um, the different levels of algebra, you find out that those do not have a perfect square and you have to be able to do one of two things. Number one, as you get into the upper grades, you'll be able to use a calculator so it won't make much of a difference, except most of the time, they're not even gonna have you calculate it. They'll just have you leave it. For instance, out of this, you're not gonna do that this this year, but I'm gonna show you something. So you see, I have a square root of four times the square root of five is equal to the square root of 20, because you take that number in the middle and those are two. Four is a perfect square. So my answer would end up being like this. So that's what you're going to be doing in the future. But for right now, all they're trying to get you to do is identify where those um, numbers, like the square root of 20, what it lies between, okay? 
So, because we guys, we know uh, four squared is 16 and five squared is 25. We know the square root of 20 is gonna be somewhere between those two. Now, which number is it closest to? Is square root of 20, so we know that, what's that? One more time. You're, you're a little far away, so it's hard to hear you. 4.5. Okay, so it's close to 4.5, but I'm talking about of these two numbers. Which one is it closest to? Think about, think about these here. Those numbers on the left. So we know that, which one is 20 closer to? 16 or 25? 16. Yeah, it's closer to 16. So, and, and uh, Andre is right. We can try 4.5 times 4.5 and we get, I'm gonna erase some stuff here. All right, and so we get, uh, All right, so this is the number we end up with, five. Uh, I think I, wait a minute, I think I did something wrong, 20. No, that's right. Two, four, eight. So 18, oh no, no, I did something wrong here. I had to, what did I do wrong? Oh, I know what I did, okay. It should be, All right, so this, um, when I multiply the second one, so it's 20, carry the two, and so it's 18 right here. And so now, carry the one, and I've got 20.25, okay? So that's a little bit above 20, but it's pretty close. Okay, let's try the one below it, 4.4. This is what I'm talking about, trial and error. So four times four is 16, carry the one, 17. Four times four is 16. Carry the one. Now, is 19.36 closer to square root of 20 or 19 or 20.25? 20.25. Yeah, so we know the answer we would choose then is the square root of 20 would be equal to um, approximately, and, and this is, let's uh, do this here. So the square root of 20, and this is what we do when we say it's close to. You see how that's a wiggly equal sign? That means it's approximately equal to, and we'll put 4.5, okay? That makes sense? So you get the closest one that's to the, uh, uh, to the, in the tenths place. Now I could keep going. I could go 4.4, whatever, whatever, but I just want you to go to the tenths. In the um, example that, what they do is exactly what I show you here. So um, now on, you notice example two says, use a calculator to approximate the value of square root of 20 to two decimal places, okay? And so if you have a calculator, you can do that, but this is what I'd rather you do. Instead of doing it to two decimal places, well, how many of you, uh, how many of you have a calculator? Basically, if you have a phone, you have a calculator. Okay, what about you, Juliana, do you have one? Okay, yeah. so go ahead and use the calculator for that. All right, any questions? All right, so let me give you one. See how you guys do here. All right, I want you to give me to the nearest tenth, the square root of 50. So to the nearest tenth.
You didn't use your calculator, did you, Andre? What? You didn't use your calculator on that, did you? I did. No, not on that one. That's what? only on the ones that says use calculator. I wanted you oh, to. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to do it. Through the uh, trial and error method, because it's only the 10th place, so it should be pretty easy. I still don't understand it, though. Okay, so what are the two perfect squares that this is between? Um, 40 and um, no. 40 is not a perfect square. One squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine. So what's the closest, that, what's the square root of 50 between, which two? Uh, seven and eight. Right, so seven squared would be 49, right? So seven squared is 49, and then eight squared is 64. So which one is this one close to, Andre? Which one? What do you mean, which um, one's the only one? I'm sorry. Is square root of 50 49. close to seven or to eight? Seven. Right. It's almost right next to it. Oh, so, wait, I see it. Okay. You know what seven squared is. Now you got to check 7.1 times 7.1. Does it, Go ahead. Does it have to be 7.1 or? Yes, because you're doing it to the nearest tenth. So you've got to check yeah. to see if 7.0 yeah. is closer or 7.1 is closer. Okay, so when you do the math, you know that 49 from 50 is a whole away. It's one away, 1.0. 1 and 7.1 is point, uh, one point, oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Um, is 1.41 away. No, no, it's 0. 0.41 away. So 7.1, is going to be closer because you can see the difference is only 0 0.41 as opposed to 7.0 which is 49 so that's a whole 1.0 away okay. Juliana are you still working on it or you get so the answer yeah so the answer 7.1 right the answer would be 7.1 if you're finding it to the nearest tenth, because that one is closest to 50 when you multiply together. Okay. We'll try another one. Juliana, are you uh, still working on it? No, I get it now. Get it? Okay, let's try another one then. All right, square root of 30. What? You don't? One second. All right, what you got? That is correct. 
You get an answer yet, um, Brianna? Why? Huh? Uh, yeah. Did you already show it to me? No. Oh. Are you afraid? I'm in the red. Oh, gotcha. That's not it. That is not it either, Juliana. You're close, but you need to check your two hands. I can't see yours. You need to hold it up a little higher. The blue one. Hmm? Uh, no, nine would not be it. These are the, it should be between five and six because five squared is 25 and six squared is 36 and 30 comes in between there. Mr. Jones? Yes. I couldn't right see at it. The bottom. At the bottom. Oh, gotcha. Uh, that's correct. I assume that's the decimal between. Is that correct, Eric? Yeah, the decimal kept on disappearing. That's fine. Correct, Juliana. Five point B. Five point five. Did you actually do the math on it? Yeah, in my book. So what'd you get when you multiplied five point five times five point five? Um, twenty-four. Uh, eleven. Really? Okay. Yeah. 5.5 times 5.5, you got 2411? Yeah. Then you didn't do your That's math correct. Right. Oh. Yeah, 50.25 is what you should have gotten for 5.5 times 5.5. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I, I did it the second time. So, but 5.4 times 5.4. So then you get 29.16. And so this one is 0 0.84 away. And this one is 0 0.25. So 5.5 is closer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Um, Andre, on test 23, I may have already sent it back to you, but you, you, just to double check, make sure you are showing your work. Oh, okay. That goes for everybody. Everybody needs to show their work, please. All right. Any other questions? Katie, did you get this one yet or no? I don't know if you said anything because your microphone's off. Oh, no, I'm not done yet. Okay. Well, Mr. Jones. Yes, ma'am. For the lesson, I just looked at it and I'm already confused on number four. Uh, on the lesson for today? Yeah. Well, it's asking you which one of those four things does it not equal? Oh. Yeah, that's what that equals with a line through it means. 
That's does not equal to. Oh, okay. It's an equal sign, Buster. Mr. Jones. Here. Another thing I know is we don't have any questions from this, from this lesson on this math lesson. Actually, you do. Which one? Which number? Um, it was number 16. Okay. I didn't notice that one. No. Yeah, it's not the same one like we just practiced. It's, it's a different uh, type. They're just asking you which two numbers it's between. They're easing you into it. Mr. Jones, I don't get it. Okay, so look here. You see how five squared is equal to 25, right? Uh -huh. Let me use a different color. So that's that one, and then six squared is 36. So we know 30 is between those two. So we know the number is going to be between five and six. These two are my things that I squared. So because five, um, I'm sorry, because 30 is closer to 25, it's only five away and it's six away from this one. I know it's near the middle, but I know it's gonna be either right in the middle or it's going to be a little bit less. So I do my two math practices or my two trial, I guess. So I multiplied five times four times 5.4 and I got 29.16. So that's close to 30. See, this one is close to that, all right? And so then I did my other multiplication, 5.5 .5 times 5.5. .5. Since this is less than 30, I went up one. And my answer is 50.25. That one's, I'm sorry, not 50. It should be 30.25. I think it's close. But anyway, it's 30.25. Okay. And so that 30.25 is only 0 0.25 away from 30. And then the second one, uh, the first one that we did was 0 0.84. So that would indicate that 5.5 .5 is closer than um, 5.4. So that would be your answer. Well, Mr. Jones, where did you get the 5.5 .5 and 5.4 from? Well, what I did was, uh, again, that's where these numbers come, um, come in handy. Let me uh, erase a few things here. <laughs> All right, you see um, five squared, I know is 25. And I know six squared is 36, okay? Mm -hmm. So, oops. So these two are kind of my markers, I guess you could say. Because I know my perfect square five squared and I know my perfect square six squared. So 30 fits in there somewhere, all right? It's gonna be between those two numbers but I don't have an exact square root of 30. In fact, if you do it on a calculator, you're gonna find it keeps going and going and going. So it's not one of those that you, you would get an exact number for. Um, so I know because 30 is five away from 25 and it's six away from 36, so it's almost right smack dab in the middle, isn't it? Yeah, so I'm gonna try the one right in the middle, which is 5.5 .5 times 5.5. .5. And I multiply those together and I get, I don't know why I did that, but 30.25, okay? So that's only 0 0.25 away from 30. Okay, so I'm pretty close. So, so that's one option. Then I did my 5.4 just to check, because I knew it was, it'd have to be less than 5.5 .5, if anything, because it's closer to 20. I mean, closer to 25 than it is to 36. Okay, it's six away from 36, only five away from 25. So I know I have to go lower than half. If I wanted to go to two decimals, who has a calculator there? Mm -hmm. If you do square root of 30, I mean, yeah, the square root of 30 on there, your answer is actually 5.47722557505151. Six six one, and it probably continues to go on from there. Yeah, five four seven, five point four seven seven two two five five. The um, the the big issue is um whether or not five point four works. Now 
when we do 5.4, we find out that 5.4 ends up being 0.84 away, whereas this one was only 0.25 away. Because 5.4 times 5.4 is 29.16. So you're using that method to see which one is closer. Okay. And then as far as really it is less than half though, isn't it? 5.5 is closer, but 5.47 is actually even closer than 5.5, but we only did one decimal. So that's why 5.5 is actually closer. Mm -hmm. Did that help or? Yeah, kind of. All right, any other questions? I have a question for uh, for language. Go ahead, I'm listening. For which one? For language, that's my problem. Oh yeah, language. we're not there yet. So that, well, we can go ahead to language now, though, since you guys are ready for this. Okay. So yeah, I got off a little early because my phone was um, died. I don't know why. Okay, one more time. You got what? Off a little early. Yeah, because my phone, I, I don't know, it was like 50% when we went for class. And then for some reason, it died. I don't know why. Yeah, and so did you go back and watch the video? I already yeah, know the answer. Yeah, but I, I didn't watch the full video. That's my problem. Yeah, it wouldn't have been that much to watch because you'd already been participating in part of it. So. so which part did you not understand then? No, I don't know really how to sign I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. What don't you understand? I mean, just what was the rest that we had assigned? I don't understand. You didn't know what the assignment was? No, like, I, I, yeah, I don't. I didn't. So what was the assignment? I don't know. I said. I did. Oh, I thought you just said you did. So you didn't oh. know what the assignment So you didn't know the assignment because you didn't go back and look at the video. And I told you to go back and look at the video. Yeah. You asked me what the assignment was. And I said, go watch the video. Text me and ask me what the assignment was. Oh no, it was like. Late. It was what? I was I was doing it yesterday night, so like it was a little late. Oh, so you waited till last night? Okay, that's why yeah. I didn't answer you probably. Well, I did tell you the pages for reading this morning. You didn't ask me anything about language. Except, can I have a copy of test seven and quiz eleven? Yeah, that's what I needed. Um, Yeah, I don't see anything in here questions about language. I didn't ask you. I just. Um, <laughs> oh. So, Andre, I'm not sure what your question is then. Um, what was the assignment? So I think yeah. I did what part difference of it. did it make? You didn't do it. No, I think I did part of it because I did the thing D and um, write E for um, page 224. That was part of it. Yeah, so the rest I didn't do. Can I take a picture of it today? Oh, you're going to have to, yeah. It was think A on 226 was the other part. Yeah. All right, so back to uh, 224 then. I think we did the first five together. Maybe even six, I think. Mr. Jones. Yes, ma'am. Um, the computer's about to die. Can I go get a charger? Go ahead, yeah. So Andre, do you have your uh, phone plugged in now? Um, it's a hundred percent right now. So. So do you keep your Bluetooth on? No. Because if you have Bluetooth on, it will draw the battery down really fast. I know that happens on my phone because okay. it's always searching for something to connect to. Do you use it for like uh, headphones or anything like that? No, you don't have anything that's Bluetooth. Well, I do, but I just don't use it at all. Well, it's po is it possible? I mean, it could be last time that you just left it on, not realizing it. Probably. I will wait for Katie to get back. I'll be.
Thank you. Yep. Uh, still waiting for Katie here. We will be doing reading together today too. Did you guys all get your booklets already? Syllabuses? Syllabuses, yeah. Yeah. Look at you correcting me. Wait, what booklets? What do you mean, what booklets? Your syllabus, Eric, your syllabus. Oh, okay. I forgot. I, forgot. I, I call it a booklet because that's what I make it into. Mr. Jones. Yes, ma'am. I didn't know that we were doing reading. Um, and I'm at my cousin's house and I didn't get my reading book. Uh, say that if you want to go get it, go ahead. I don't have it because I'm at my cousin's house. Oh, you're not supposed to be there. Um, well, then you're just going to have to listen to what we're do what we're talking about. Okay. By the way, there's no vi history video tomorrow because you have the test. So don't forget to do that quiz and the practice test. And and my suggestion would be that when you're doing the the um, practice test, that you just go through the questions. If you know it, you know it. But look at the answers. And if you don't know it, then all you need to do is then all you need is um. make sure that you have the right answer then. But if you already know what the answer is, it makes it easier. You're just kind of testing yourself at that time. All right, so here we go. Back to uh, history, I mean, uh, language. All right, it says, uh, we already done up through six, I think. Number seven. So on the first blank, um, it is not an adverb, it's an adjective modifying days and long is also an adjective modifying days. So NA on both of those. Number eight, what do you have for number eight, Andre? For um, number eight, I have encouraged. Yeah, encouraged is correct. Greatly is modifying encouraged. Um, how about number nine, Eric? First line. What page? 224. Your microphone's not on again, so I'm not sure if you realize that. Do I have to look to see if you guys did the work or what? I didn't do it. No. I wasn't here last time. Yeah, so what does that mean? Do it. I didn't do it. Eric, did you watch the video? Wait a minute. I already know the answer. Yes, no. Okay. All right, I'm gonna start just giving you guys zeros and then count them, okay? Because it's not like you guys don't have time to get your work done. You just don't do it. Why didn't you do it, Eric? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Why weren't you here for class last Friday? Because I wasn't there. I know that, but why? I didn't make it on time. Make it? You didn't make it at all. On time, nothing. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't let me log in, but and I didn't yeah. admit we were gone. And that's fine, but you, you need to then do what? You need to go watch the video so you know what your assignment is. It's not, there's no absence and presence. There's no, I'm here at school and I'm not here at school. If you don't get to see the video, if you don't get to interact, you have to go back and you have to find it yourself and you have to go watch it and find out what the assignment is. You are still responsible for it, so. All right, so just uh, turn your, Sound off so that you can't hear the answers and then you got to go back and do it and show it to me later on. You got your name down here. Do you have yours, Katie? Yeah. Can you go ahead and tell me what you have for an answer for nine? Adjective? 
Well, no, ma'am. Did, did we remember we were doing it where you, if it's, it's an adverb, it says if the word in the bold print is an adverb, write the word that it modifies in a blank. If it's, it, if it's not an adverb, write N-A. So the first one is definitely on number nine on page 224. Oh! I'm on page 226. We haven't even done 226. Uh, we, yeah, we haven't started that yet. Oh, wow. I mean, we did. We did the top of it, but 224, you're supposed to do. Okay, well, it's an adverb. Yeah, but you're supposed to tell me what is it modifying. Oh. Ship? No, really? uh, be destroyed. Would be destroyed, not ship be destroyed. destroyed. A ship is not an, an, a verb. Remember, um, an adverb can only modify a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. And so would be destroyed is what definitely is modifying there. What about the second one, Brianna? Perish. Um, so no one, how is per, uh, perish? Okay, um, I see what you're saying. Um, that is not, no, that is a, that is a subject. One is, oh. no one is the subject. It's a pronoun, no one, anyone, what? everyone. So it's a subject, it's not uh, an adverb there. So it's N-A on that one. How about number 10, Juliana, first one. What is quickly modifying? Quickly swim. That's correct. How about ashore, Andre? You still have that one, right? Um, ashore is an A. No, nope, it is modifying something. Quickly is modifying swam. It's how you swam, and then ashore is modifying. Brianna. Quickly. It's also uh, in that is no, it's not modifying quickly. It's well, not, it's it doesn't say how quickly. Swim. What's that? It's also modifying swim. It is, yes. It's modifying swim as well. It's just answering the question where in that case. Swam where, swam ashore, swam how, swam quickly. And so that's the idea. All right. Number 11, Katie. First one, quite. What is it modifying? Arrived. Arrived quite. Does that sound right? Right, no, safely. Yeah, safely would be correct. And how about, um, what about the word safely then, uh, Juliana, what did that modify? I put a name. Okay, that is not correct. It is modifying something. How about you, Andre? Mm -hmm. Safely. Quite safely, oh, safely, um, Arrived? Yeah, it's a modifying arrived. How did he arrive? Arrived safely. How safely? Quite safely. And so that is the way you're supposed to do it. All right. Write E. It says on notebook paper, write sentences using the following adverbs. And so you're supposed to write a sentence using wildly, politely, very, especially quite and two. All right. So, Juliana, give me your sentence for wildly. The cow wildly ran through the fence. The cow wildly ran through the fence? Yeah. That's that's, what that, that will work, okay. Um, Brianna, how about politely? She politely asked her mom for a cookie. Okay, very good. Um, Andre, how about very? Um, I didn't do two of them. I didn't do very and really? especially. Can you show me what you did do? I did the four. I, I did four uh, other ones, but I didn't do especially in very. Why? Because I couldn't find any. I don't know why. Seriously, for very, you couldn't find anything? Very is like one of the easiest ones. Katie, what do you have for very? Uh, your mic. I, wonder my, I did very. very. Hot. I thought you said you didn't do very. I just asked you for no. Oh, I didn't do um two and especially. Anyway, go ahead, Katie. The stove was very hot. Okay. All right. And then, uh, okay, Juliana, um, especially. 
I didn't do especially, and that that's the only one I didn't do. Okay. How about you, Brianna? I enjoy traveling, traveling, especially to different places. Okay. No. Yeah. Yep. All right. That will work. So, what did you guys? What did you have for modif that modifying then, Brianna? Especially. Yeah. An adverb. Well, it has to be modified. Let's just circle the word that you're that the adverb modifies. I didn't circle. I forgot to circle. So, what do you think it modifies? Different. Um. No. How would it modify different? Well, never mind. Okay. Katie, what was your sentence again? Can you read it? For what? The no one that I had you read, number three. Oh, the stove was very hot. Okay, so what is very modify on that one? Hot? Yeah, it does. Okay. What is hot as far as a um, um, part of speech there? Uh, an adjective? It is, yeah. Okay. Juliana, what about wildly for you? Where did you have that one modifying? Couldn't hear you. I heard scratch. Wildly modifying ran. Can you read your sentence again? The cat wildly ran through the fence. That would be right. That would be good. Okay. Who did this? Who did this? Me. Okay. What, what do you have that modifying? And read your sentence again because I forgot what it was. She politely asked her mom for a cookie. Okay. It's modifying asked. Very good. Okay, yeah. How about quite, Andre? Quite. That was quite um that was quite extremely dangerous. Quite extremely dangerous? Yeah. Seems a little redundant, but that's okay. Okay, so what do you have it modifying? Um, why is modifying extremely? Yeah, it doesn't really work that way. Um, yeah. doesn't sound right anyway. Quite extremely dangerous. I guess that could work. That, that would be right. Okay, how about T-O-O? -O? Who has one for that? Your... Go ahead, Brianna. It's two out. Okay, and uh, two being modifying was? Loud. Okay, so, and then it is your subject and is is your verb, actually, even though it's apostrophe S. Um, and apostrophe S, I guess, would be the, uh, the, the verb there. And it would be an adjective. It's modifying. All right, page 226 then. I'll have to turn off my... Um, yeah, just okay. turn off the sound. I'll, I'll wave when it's time. All right, you guys ready? All right, here we go. Number one is adjective. Two adverb, three adverb, four adjective, five adverb, six adjective, seven adverb, eight adjective, nine adverb, ten adjective, eleven adjective, and twelve adverb. Any questions? What was two and four? I two mean, two and five. Two and five? Two is adverb, five was adverb. And what was one? One was adjective. Katie? Microphone six and hand. seven. Okay, six and seven. Six was adjective and seven was adverb. Okay. Any questions on any of those as to why they are what they are? No. Okay, then are there any that you don't understand why they are what they are? Even though you may not have questions because you don't want to, you just want to get it done with, but. Are there any that you guys don't understand that you missed? I would assume you understand the ones you got right. No? Okay. How do we get Eric's attention back? Like we got it. I'm back. Eric, are you there? Okay. 
All right, so look at think B. Think B is going to be uh, the same thing as think A, okay? Except this one counts for points. And so you're going to be identifying the underlined word by writing ADV or ADJ in the blank. Remember, an adverb will not modify a noun. Only adjectives do that. And so you've got 10 there. And then look on the bottom. It says list all other adjectives except articles and adverbs in think A and think B. So in think A and think B, and I will tell you exactly how many there are going to be of each one. All the other ones besides the ones that are written in there, okay? Um, and so you'll have to get the answers for that one, uh, Andre and Eric, when time comes, after you show me that you have it, I'll send you what your uh, what the answers are for that. And so that way you can double check to make sure you get the right things. But these are the other ones, okay? There should be eight adjectives and four adverbs. All the other ones, except articles, it's saying the ones that weren't marked already is what it's saying. So those that are marked, you don't wanna do, you just wanna pick the ones that are not underlined, okay, that are there. So eight adjectives and four adverbs, all right? You got that marked, okay? Because that would be for points two. And then on page 227, do your own job. Andre probably hears that all the time at home. No, yeah, I don't know. You hear all kinds of stuff, don't you? Always yeah. people telling you what to do. All right. Uh, so why don't you read for us, Andre? Adjectives modify only nouns and pronouns. They cannot modify verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. That is the job of an adverb. Oh, do I keep on? Yep. Can you identify the modifier uh, modifier errors in, in the following sentences? Okay, so Eric, what is wrong with that first one? It's supposed to be sweet, not sweetly. That's correct. Unless a rose has a nose and is actually sniffing something, it cannot smell sweetly. All right. So, Brianna, what about you? Number two, so, the second one there, Goliath was sure tall. What is wrong with that one? Um, it, there's supposed. There, there's not supposed to be a sure there. So what should? Goliath was tall? Was really tall? No, um, it would be surely tall. Surely is actually a word that oh. you would use instead. Because it is an adverb, it's telling you to what extent was he. He was surely mm -hmm. tall, okay? All right, uh, actually it's probably modifying tall, surely tall, so it would be an adverb. Okay, Andre, um, how about the third one there? That was a real good book report, Jackson. Um, supposed to be really good report. Um, That's correct. Really yeah. good book report. Should be really good. That's right. Really good book report. Okay, Katie, fourth one. I have to admit that I played the piano bad. And microphone, if you. Um, I'm sorry. What did you say? It's just that my neighbor is mowing the lawn, and I can't really hear you. Okay, it's on uh, page two twenty-seven, and that fourth example on the blue section there. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with that fourth sentence? I have to admit that I play the piano bad. The, um, it doesn't make sense. You can't I mean, it doesn't use make sense. Badly isn't a word. What isn't a word? Badly. Yes, well, it, is. it is. But it is, but not like does it make sense in this sentence? Oh, sure it does. It's just that you're not used to using it that way. It says, I have to admit that I play the piano. How do I play? I play badly. Um, that is actually a word. It's just we're not used to saying it that way. Um, Juliana, how about the last one? I feel badly about forgetting your birthday. I feel bad. About yes. Being... You can't feel badly uh, when it's having to do with feeling. Uh, you feel bad or you feel um, you don't feel badly. You just... 
feel bad about forgetting your birthday because that is um, a bad is a, an adjective. And so because bad is an adjective, I feel how I feel or I feel what feel is a linking verb there. Bad. All right. So you're going to change on think A. Um, things that are adjectives to its adverb form. Now, this is an easy part here. So this will be good, easy for you to change things to the proper form, including spelling. So make sure you do that, okay? Then on 228, a real test. Right. Bless you. Um, it says never use sure. I'm going to look closely there, top of 228. Never use sure, real, or bad as adverbs. The adverb forms are surely, really, and badly. That cake was surely good. I know, we don't use it that way, are we? Bless you. Um, he was really nice. I guess sometimes we'll use it that way, the proper way. Um, he, I did badly on my geography test. I know. So I, I did horrible on my geography test. I... Dunk on my geography test. That was horrible on my geography test. Anyways, something like that. All right. You got. Links there. You have to correct one that goes with it, and then identify whether it's an adjective or an adverb. Or an earthquake at Brianna's house. That's okay. Just leave it for a moment. So hint, hint on this one. Mr. Jones, can you wait just a second? There's a random person at my house. A random person. Do we need to call 911? Earthquake at Andre's too. You can fix it now, Brianna, if you want real quick. If you need to, you don't have to, it's up to you. I just, I'll just leave it for you. Okay. I'm not gonna go in here. That's fine. Whoa, big news story. It says, judge declares Oregon Governor Brown's coronavirus restrictions null and void. It says so a county, county judge has declared Oregon Governor Kate Brown's coronavirus restrictions null and void because she didn't have her emergency orders approved by the legislature. So they're declaring war? What's that? What are they doing, declaring war? No. Oh. <laughs> Null and void. In other words, that they are not, they're, they, they're no longer in effect. And it says that the governor, though, is appealing it to the state Supreme Court to try to keep the emergency orders in effect. Oh, you're back, Katie? Oh, I guess Just a not. second. Okay. That was right. really weird. That was just a random person in my driveway. Oh, they maybe they were just turning around or something. Delivering packages? Do, or do you, did you guys have expect any packages to be delivered? Yeah. Sometimes people will drive up and just grab things from the door. Or they may be delivering something that's possible too. Sometimes uh Amazon lets you use their own their own vehicles. All right. So anyway, uh just a hint here for page two twenty eight, and this is your last page. But two twenty eight, um you are if if it's an L Y one that you're supposed to pick, it's gonna be an adverb. Okay. So that way it'd be easy to match up and it'd be an easy point for you. Okay? Any questions about that? All right. 
Now, let's, uh, so your assignment there for language, write it down. Uh, think B 226 through 228. All for points. All right, so you're reading today. Wait, Mr. Jones, can you say the language assignment again? Nikki was asking me something. 226B through 228. Are we going to be reading a story? Uh, we are not. Okay. But what I'm going to cover with you a little bit, if you turn to page number, um, what is it? It's going to talk a little bit. Work text page 221. I am getting ready to assign you your short story that you're going to be writing for 10% of your reading grade for the fourth quarter. Well, so, yeah, I have a reading book. never heard me say that before. I know I you heard. Hold on, hold on. All right, Juliana, I have been telling you for weeks, actually since the first quarter, that the last quarter you guys will be writing that very first sheet we did, 53, 54. Um, you guys are supposed to, oh, let me, uh, let me help you out a little bit. Mr. Jones is at 221, right? 221, yep. I need my reading book. I can, I need, it's so Where is it, Andre? Donde está? I left, I left it downstairs. May I go get it? Yeah, quickly. <laughs> Other, other people have things to do, places to go, people to see. Right, guys? Especially the things to do thing. for Andre there, huh? So, uh, who didn't have their book with them? I forgot. It was that you, Brianna? Yeah. Okay. So, just listen um, as we're going through this. You don't have your reading either. Your reader, uh, your workbook, right? Yeah, I don't have it. Okay. Um, but if you uh, just listen, and of course, if you want to go back when you get back home and, and watch this part of the video, that would be fine too. Probably be a little helpful for you. Okay. So Eric, don't forget to send that page, okay? From language that you didn't get done yet. And then Andre needs to send his as well. Never mind, I'm back. Okay, so don't forget to send that page, Andre. I was just looking at my note and remind you yes. about it. Um, so if you guys have your books, just go back to 563. We're not gonna read the whole thing, but I just wanna read that, um, that first, that little block there that's right at the beginning of it. And so you can just listen to this, Brianna, and try to imagine in your mind what it's talking about. What page? Page uh, 563. All right, so it says, did you recognize that the story of Laura Bridgman was a biography? Several people have written book length biographies about this remarkable woman. Um, but some people who have written biographies of her own, of her own admitted everything about Laura's con conversion, omitted everything about Laura, Laura's conversion to Christ. Why is that? 
How could a biographer not mention Laura Bridgman's faith when it was central to her life? One answer is that authors write with certain ideas in mind. For instance, if an author wanted to write a book to show that, that deaf and blind people have achieved great things, he might focus his whole book on Laura Bridgman's accomplishments and never once mention her faith. Or an author who doesn't believe in God might leave any, out anything about Laura's faith because he thinks it's unimportant. The way an author handles a story will affect his reader. He can write stories that give people hope, or he can, if he chooses, write stories to make people despair. An author's work reflects his attitude. An author's attitude about what he writes creates the work's moral tone. That phrase there, moral tone, is um, what you know. the focus is as far as what you need to, to consider when you're writing something, and when you're reading something, and when you're watching something on television or watching something on YouTube. What somebody believes may not be that important. For instance, if, if you um, wanted to find out how to uh, keep a student from spinning in their chair, okay? And I wanted to watch a video on, online about how to glue it in place so that you can't spin in it, I will probably go to a video on YouTube and not have to worry about whether or not the guy is saved. If he has the knowledge to do it or to fix a car or to do anything else like that, that is a mechanical type thing, his whole philosophy about who God is or anything like that may not matter much. Or it may not matter much to me as far as the information I'm looking for. Now, if while he's in the video, he's cursing and he's doing other things, well, that, that might have an effect then, you know, whether I want to watch his video or somebody else's. So anything we watch, anything we read, anything we do, all of that has an effect. And so um, I just wanted to make sure you understand that because when you write your story, um, those things are reflected and it may not be that important to have in your story. It may, but you want to make sure that you are um, reflecting something that is what you really believe, what your moral tone is for yourself. So in this particular thing that we're talking about in the short story, which you guys, of course, will be writing, um, it says here, read the following partial short story, fill in the blanks at the right-hand column with a letter that describes the element of fiction that has been underlined. You may want to refer to previous literature lessons for review. Now, those literature lessons are the five pages which you should have done. Now, I'm going to hold it right up here to the camera. Some of you already have them all. Some of you still haven't done them all. Some of you, probably some of you thrown away your original ones, even though I told you not to. But this is what you need. 53, 54, 91, 92, 119, 120, 135, 136, and 193, 194. Those are the five pages that have that brainstorm information that you guys are supposed to fill out. All right, now if you haven't done them or if you need copies, give me a um, uh, text message and I will print them for you and I'll send them to you in the next envelope so that you have them for the thing to be able to fill out. And this is supposed to help you to be able to write your story. Do you absolutely have to have it? No, not really. Um, but it really does help to have that information in there because if you've been keeping up with your ideas, then it certainly makes a difference. All right, so, uh, and by the way, if you just want a picture of this, these page numbers, I'll send a text to you if you want it. So just let me know that as well. All right, so let's read this. And you got three choices here. A is a character revealed by his or her actions. B, character revealed by what he or she says. Or C, the details of the setting. So those are three things we're looking for as we read this thing. Um, Juliana, why don't you go ahead and start reading there. This is Adriana, sat in the widow seat, reading short, Hey, wait a minute. Short, what kind of seat? It's not a seat that lost its husband. Set? No, no, no. What kind of a seat, I said. What oh. did you, you said widow, but it's window. I said widow? Yes, you did, but anyway, go ahead. So absorbed was she that she did not even hear the creak of the door. The golden sunlight warmed the cold gray stones of the wall at her back to a more golden hue. She twirled the sandy locks that, that draped over her shoulder with one long finger. Okay, that's draped over it. It's like hanging over. You girls would know about this. Probably most of us guys would have no clue about what it's like to have hair hanging over our shoulders 
and then us twirling it with our fingers, all right? I've seen girls do that often. Guys, I've never seen do that. If I did that, I would lose more hair than I have already. Hey, Jones. Right. Yeah. My hair is too short for that. It is still, yeah. And some, and some girls keep it short that way so that they, don't, they can't do that. Um, look, at, um, look at the first one. It says, so absorbed was she. All right, so is that a character revealed by his or her actions, a character revealed by what he or she says, or details of setting? Andre, what do you think? I think it's A. It is A, yeah. So it's talking about what she's doing. She was so absorbed. She was thinking so much about um, the, the things she was reading that she didn't even hear the creak of the door. All right, now, uh, what about the second one there, um, Eric? It says, the golden sunlight warmed the gray, cold gray stones of the wall at her back to a more golden hue. What page are we on? Wow, 221 in your work text, Eric. Okay. So this whole time, you had no clue what page we were on. So why didn't you say anything until now? Well, I was hoping you wouldn't call on me, Mr. Jones. Am I close? No? Okay. So, do you see, are you there? I thought of the right page, but I wasn't. So, 221, and it's basically, you see that second underlined sentence uh, where it says, the golden sunlight warmed the gray cold stones of the wall at her back to a more golden hue? Yeah. Okay, so is that a character revealed by his or her actions? Character revealed by what he or she says, or is that details of the setting? Details of the setting? Yeah, so it would be letter C there. All right. Katie, go ahead and uh, continue on reading there in that next paragraph. Her gray eyes widened and twirled, and twirling stopped. Her free hand groffed for the necklace and hung around her neck. Her shoulders moved with quickening breaths. Mistress, Adriana jumped to her feet, dropping the necklace back into place. Is something the matter? The short servant girl was standing beside her. Do I keep reading? Uh, yeah, we'll go, ahead, go ahead and keep going. Oh, Margaret, it's you, Adriana sighed and dropped back into her window seat. I'm fine. It's just this book. I really do let my imag imagination carry me away. All right, ma'am. So long as nothing, nothing's frightening. Oh, there's nothing frightening. There's nothing frightening here, and I'm in more danger of scaring myself than anything else. Miss Princess smiled at her serving maid. What did you come for? Margaret dropped a, cur a curtsy. Oh, we'll see if you would like some French, some fresh gingerbread. Okay, and so um, you see that. Uh, just overall, what do you notice about her when the servant comes in? How is Adriana herself? What is, what is she, what, what's going on? She's imagining things. Yeah, she, well, not just imagining things, but she's distracted. You know, she's, she's still thinking about what she was just been reading. And it says her, her eyes widen and the twirling of her hair. Remember, she was twirling her hair, stopped. Her free hand groped for the necklace that hung around her neck. What does that mean to grope for it? She grabbed like. Well, you're kind of grabbing it, but clumsily. You know, you're you're doing it in a way that's not very precise. And so, grope for the neck was hung around her neck. Her shoulders moved with quickening breaths. So, what does that indicate that her shoulders moved with quickening breaths? She was scared. She yeah, scared. that she, that that she was suddenly frightened. Okay. Now, obviously, um, the uh, the girl, the servant girl. You know, she says, mistress. And then Adriana jumped to her feet, dropping the necklace back into place. Is something the matter? The short servant girl was standing beside her. And so you see that she sort of startled her because she was distracted by this book. All right. So go back up to that one. It says her gray eyes widened and the twirling stopped. Her free hand groped for the necklace that hung around her neck and her shoulders moved with quickening breaths. So is that a, uh, a B, or C there? Eric, what do you think? microphone b so you think it's a character revealed by what he or she says is she even saying anything Wait. A. 
Yeah, it would be A. It's, a, it's another one where it's revealed by her actions in this particular case. Okay, how about that next underlined part? I really do let my imagination carry me away. What do you think, uh, Katie? Um, A? So is it, it, that's her actions or is she speaking there? There's an easy way to tell. I feel like it's both. Well, it's not both. Um, it is just that part that's underlined is all part of her speaking. Because you oh. see where the uh, quotation is? I'm fine. It's just this book. I really do let my imagination carry me away. So it's she's telling about oh. herself that her imagination uh, carries her away. All right, Juliana, what about that next one there? Um, I'm in more danger of scaring myself than anything else. C. Um, so that's details of the setting. So what is the setting that it's telling you about? You had you had a one in three chance, Juliana, and you missed it. In other words, you guessed. You have no clue. Am I correct or not? No, I actually thought it was C. So you thought that there was details of the setting in that? So what would the setting be revealed that's there? Setting is talking about time and place. So there's nothing in there about time and place. And then also, again, just like I had mentioned to Katie, there's a, it's, in, it's part of the quote. You see where it says, oh, there's nothing frightening here. I'm in more danger of scaring myself than anything else. So that was her speaking. So right there, you can tell it's revealed by what he or she says. Let her be there for that. Andre, read that, third, that last part there. <laughs> The last underlying thing? No, no, just the, the whole thing. Go start reading that last section. Oh, meanwhile, in, in the palace, um, palace stables, Sir um, um, Gregory leaped off his horse and ha handed the reins to the stable boy. Gregory strode across the courtyard with shoulders squared. He entered the alcove. What is that called? Yep, that's right, alcove, yep. Al alcove that led him um, led to the king's council room. The guard at the door merely nodded as Gregory entered and closed the door behind him. I beg you pardon. No, Excellency. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon, Excellency. Gregory said in a low, even voice. The king turned from gazing out the window. Oh yes, Gregory. What is your report? The gates are secured. The outposts have detected nothing unusual. Gregory stood at ease, feet apart and hands behind his back. Now tell me about that family in in the North Quarter. Is the um, father any better? The king asked. Okay. So now go back up there, Andre, and said the part that says strode across the courtyard with shoulders squared. Is that something that's revealing about the character, revealing by what he says, or details of the setting? Action. What, which one? The uh, A. Yep, letter A. So, because he stands up st straight and square, which sort of reveals what kind of a person he is, that he's uh, in control of himself, that type of thing. All right, so on each of these four pages, you're going to be doing a similar thing. All right? Um, the very last page. It says, if you don't mind, I mean, on the bottom part, sorry. It says, below are two plans that the author of this story might use to complete the story. Circle the letter, the one that would be the better ending for the above short story. And that's talking about the part that's at the top of the page. Then you would see which one would uh, work at the bottom of the page, which one would be the better one. Now, as far as your story, so listen, listen to uh, what I'm going to tell you here. So the short story that is due for this quarter Everything that you have to turn in has to be turned in by June 5th. That's two Fridays from this Friday, two weeks from this Friday. So you basically have two and a half weeks left of any missing assignments, any, any kind of assignments that you have, and that includes the short story for reading. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm going to have to ask you like every day what my assignments are for certain subjects because 
just like send me a picture because I accidentally sent my a missing assignment sheet in the envelope today, this morning. Hey, come on. I mean, this. I told you about it last week to take it out. Yeah, I know. How many, how many tests and quizzes am I going to find in there again? I don't know. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I will, yeah, I'll send you pictures of it, but can't you, can you get online also to see things online? Um, I tried doing the library thing, but I, I don't know. It doesn't, I don't know how to do, how to check my messing assignments on iGrade. Okay. Well, you should be able to go to each class and then um, click on assignment somewhere. I, I haven't done it from that end. I've only done it from the teacher end, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Andre, do you know, because you check every once in a while, don't you, for missing assignments? Or maybe Brianna? Um, no. How about you, Brianna? Do you check missing assignments sometimes? On iGrade? Yeah, on iGrade. Uh, no. Oh, okay. I do check for them, just not like, not like most of the time. But do you know how do you, when you are looking for missing assignments, what you have, how do you do that? Oh, I just asked my mom. Oh, she does it. Okay. My main um, helper. Yeah, I'll do that for you, Katie. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, uh, anyway, so as far as your short story, though, this should be, look, one page. Yeah, it might be a decent story if it's that good and it's that thorough then you're going to get a decent grade on it. But generally, it's been two or three pages what people turn in when they're, when they're pretty good. And I don't care if you write on the front back. I don't care if you print. I don't care if you type it. It doesn't matter to me how you do it, um, just as long as you do it, right, not somebody else, and you're not pulling a um, story from something online, all right? Just tell your story, you know, the characters that you had come up with. And if you need to change it a little bit, that's fine. That, that happens. I'm not expecting you to go specifically exactly from what you had started with, but that is due by that Friday. And so you guys have to make sure you get all your work in. Don't wait, hold on, don't wait until that last week to try to do a whole bunch of missing assignments for those of you that are short on assignments, because you will not, there's no way you're gonna be able to do that. Now you will have less work. That last week we won't have spelling, that last week, we will only have like a math test. I don't, maybe one lesson if that. Um, that last week, we will not have reading at all, the other assignments. That last week, we will not have science, I believe, or history, definitely not spelling. So, so you'll be fairly free that last week. I mean, you'll have some assignments, some tests especially to do, but um, as far as other things you, you just need to make sure you don't try to cram it all in because it's just not it's not going to work for those of you that try to cram in work you know what happens you turn it in you get two out of 20 or four out of 25 and, and it doesn't really help your grade it really just doesn't you know you can try to make your mom or dad happy by sure you have assignments done but if you don't have them done well it's really not going to make much of a difference as far as your grade goes and uh, so just want to encourage you to get it done now get it done ahead of time but keep up with your current assignments because so many times people concentrate on their missing assignments. They spend all their time doing missing assignments and then they don't get their regular assignments done, which then become missing assignments. And so it really doesn't make much of a difference in your grade. It's just going to be the same thing. All you do is cover and say for your mom, to, yes, I've done all those missing assignments, but you know what? They're assuming you're doing your regular assignments at that same time. All right. So don't, don't be dishonest with them. Just tell them, uh, you know, spend extra time each day. It's so much easier to do a little bit each day, an hour, hour and a half each day, get things caught up. Then you don't have to worry about so much at the end. Okay. All right. Did you, anybody have a question about anything? I did. Go um, ahead, yes. Do we make story? I couldn't understand you. Do we make up the story? Juliana, the pages I showed you here, Remember those pages? Okay. Those pages are things that you were doing brainstorms on. Do you remember that? That's where you're supposed to get the information from the story. Yes, you make up your own story, but these are to help you. These help you with the plot, with the character, um, ways that you can use different things to help you. Remember that? Okay. So that's what this is for. Yeah. Go ahead, Katie. Go ahead, Katie. Um, so how am I supposed to check my assignments online? Uh, well, I, I think 
when you go into iGrade, can you get into your account in iGrade? Uh, okay, I can do that right now. All right, go ahead. If you're done, other than that, uh, guys, you can you can go ahead and, and leave if you want to. I'm done with that. I just wanted to remind you about that assignment. So, Do you have any more questions, Juliana? No. Okay, you can go if you want to. You can hang out if you want to also. Okay, I'm okay. in. All right, so is there, can you share your screen with me? I can show you. Oh, okay, that's right, because you're not on the same computer. Okay, so for instance, hit hit the fifth, sixth grade Bible. Fifth and sixth, okay. I clicked it. Okay, so it should come up with um, just a general screen. And then on the left, again, you should have different things. Does it have assignments on that yeah. uh, menu on the left? Go ahead and hit that. Might be good to turn it sideways too because it'll be a little easier to see in on your phone. Okay. And so then uh, if you, I don't know if you have to move to the right a little bit or, you know, pull it left so you can see where it says, okay, so let's see, hold on a second. Oh, it's still coming up, hold on. As soon as it starts showing something, let me know. I've tried to check before, but then it like didn't show anything at all, it was just blank. But I think I did it wrong. I went to the wrong spot. Is it still doing the circle? Yeah. Okay. Your mom texted me back, Katie. Yeah. Um, I didn't get to read it because it was while we were in class, but hold on. She was just asking about you tutoring for math. So um, she says, can we arrange tutoring with you at least once a week to go through her weekly math? Let me know if that works for you. Um, I, I don't think it would be a problem. Uh, it might be, might be better. Well, we'll see. Um, I was gonna suggest maybe Mrs. Jones to help because you're gonna be in her math class next year. And so it might be helpful for her to be able to go through the sixth grade with you. Okay, but. Okay. So is it on now? Mm -hmm. All right. So hold it a little closer because I'm having a hard time. And, and then lift it up higher. Okay, right there, hold it still. All right, so go ahead and you see where it says status? Uh -huh. All right, so if you scroll up, if you, if you pull it up, if there's anything that, the one that's you means it's ungraded. Okay. B means it's completed on time, L means it's late, and I means it's incomplete. Okay, but it just says quarter one. Oh, let me see again. Well, then go to quarter four. You, you should be able to do it. There's a pull down menu. You should be able to do quarter four. Oh, I see. Okay, I, now it's coming up. Okay. So that's how you can see which ones you have. Now, of course, it's nice when you it's on a computer or something where you can actually see more at a time. Um, but you can go through that and you can look at see what missing assignments you have. Oh, okay. So, all right. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right, let me know if there's anything else you have questions about, okay? Okay, thank you. Right. Bye. All right, see you later. Bye.